Gordon Thomas is a journalist who specialises in the world of espionage. The Welsh writer sold 45 million books, all written at a desk that once belonged to T.E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia. He's an expert in the most feared and respected secret service, Israel's Mossad. His knowledge comes from conversations with former Mossad directors such as Rafael Aitan and Mayor Amit. He's perhaps a man who knows too much. We talked to him about the death of Hamas leader Mahmoud al Mabou in Dubai. Mr. Thomas, my first question will be direct. With your experience and knowledge of Mossad's methods, do you think the assassination of Mahmoud al Mabou in Dubai last month was an Israeli operation? Absolutely, it was, a, it, it, it was another assassination by the Mossad. There's no doubt about it. The operation has all the hallmarks of the Mossad. It shows in a number of ways. First, there was the choice of the bedroom of a hotel, which is their favorite place to assassinate. Secondly, the operation was planned so they could just go into a hotel, do it and be gone. And that's how they did it. What is interesting about this particular assassination in Dubai is that it fell on the watch of the prime minister again, Bibi Netanyahu. And it's the second time he's been involved had to give the order. When I say involved, it's, I mean this. No assassination can take place in Israel without the written authority of the prime minister. He has to sign a document that says he has authorized this assassination. The Israeli cabinet must have been informed. On a recent visit to Brussels, the Israeli foreign minister Avigdor Lieberman told reporters, journalists watch too many James Bond movies. The fact is, he's not telling the truth. Basically, the rule of the Mossad, we admit nothing, we deny nothing. And that was summarized for me in a slightly different way by um, David Kimshi when he was deputy director of Mossad. And I asked him to summarize the role of Mossad in the world today. He said, it's very simple. It's Mossad first, last and always, and always for Israel. So that is their attitude. This man in Dubai was a threat, a real threat. We know, and I've learned to confirm this separately, that he had gone to Dubai to meet an Iranian arms dealer. The intention was to bring arms into Gaza to fire on Israel. They knew that. Dubai's police have identified at least 27 suspects. Is it unusual for so many agents to be used in such an operation? The number is incredible, I have to tell you. And I can't imagine Mossad ever sending 26 people to kill one person. The Kidon unit, Kidon in Hebrew, means bayonet. And the assassination unit has a total of 48 people, of which six are women. They normally send on an execution mission four people. I think what's happened, though, recently Mossad have expanded their informal system into Arab countries. And I think they've been, this was an exercise, part of it was an exercise that ran simultaneously with the assassination. But today there's no evidence linking Israel with the operation, but there are strange coincidences. On January the 19th, the day of the murder, the Israeli embassy in London posted a message in Twitter that was removed the next day. The message read, Israeli tennis player carries out hit on Dubai target. That day, Israeli tennis player Shahar Peer won a match in the Dubai Tennis Championship. But images of the hotel Al Bustan Rotana show several suspects with tennis rackets monitoring the hallways. Does this message have a double meaning? The Mossad are extremely good at cover and also extremely good at using it to create terror in examples. When they choose a target to attack, they will often send a family on the day they're going to kill him. A wreath, condolences expressed. They will sometimes publish in Arab, new, Arab newspapers the, the, his death notice and so on, even before he's dead. Nothing can be more terrifying 
than to receive something like a, a death notice, you know. Psychological warfare is part of their game. And what happened here, again, with the tennis rackets, there's nothing more harmless looking than a group of people turning up like tennis players to play a game. You think, well, they're just maybe more players in this tournament. It doesn't matter. They were not. They were Mossad agents. Some of the suspects had fake passports from Europe, but with real identities of Israeli citizens with dual nationality. Is this a common method used by Mossad? Yes, it is. It is. It is. How this works is quite simple. They have a unit, a special team, who are trained in lifting passports from holidaymakers, usually. The specialist areas are uh, Malaga, Marbella, uh, south of Spain, Thailand, countries like that. Dubai has the most effective immigration passport control system because it was installed by the Americans for them, by, for, for, for the Dubai authorities. So they wanted to test that system. Quite simple. You, get your, you may send your extra people in to do a separate job. They go in check in, check out again, and nervous they've done. And maybe they've been picked up. We don't, we don't, there's a lot of unanswered questions about the Dubai mission. The investigation of the Dubai police has stated that Al Mabu was sedated and later suffocated to simulate natural death. Is this how Mossad kills? Yes, standard way of killing. The poisons will be prepared by the, Mo the Mossad chemists, and they operate from their unit in the suburbs of Tel Aviv. They've used an anesthetic that's used in surgery. It's been doctored slightly to make it more effective quickly. It has to, the, the, the drug used has to leave the body quickly. What political implications could this have for Benjamin Netanyahu if Mossad is finally found to be responsible? The implications are serious. And yet in a funny way, Nothing's going to happen in terms of seriousness. People I've talked to in the intelligence world, and that includes people in London, New York, um, Washington, and so on, they've all said, good job, well done. We wouldn't, couldn't do it. They've done it. One less to worry about. Hamas denounces the involvement with logistics of the PNA, the Palestinian National Authority, and even some Arab regimes like Egypt or Jordan. What do you think of these allegations? Maybe this will be the excuse they need to launch another war again, another action this time. I mean, there are very powerful forces working in Damascus Israel, Syria. Israel and Syria launched a new round of secret negotiations over the Golan Heights some months ago with U.S. mediation. May Syria have helped in this operation to take advantage of the negotiations? There's a fact that shouldn't be forgotten. Mahmoud al-Mabou was based in Damascus for more than a decade. Meir Degan has had several meetings with Syrian intelligence. The chiefs has met with them and has discussed the relationship. And I think that it's possible that Syria did play an important, Syrian intelligence play an important role in keeping Mossad informed where he was. Mossad were able to work one assassination, Mugnier, very successfully in Damascus. Nothing came of it, just a little protest from Syria but the relationship between Syria and Israel is very interesting. Neither want to confront each other anymore. They would like to have a, a relationship which would remove terrorism from their doorstep too. Syria wants to come back off the table into the West in the way that Libya has. Muchas gracias, señor Thomas, por esta entrevista. Gracias. Yes, yes.